if you're hungry. I've got masses to eat. Well, I could do with something. Look, uh, tell you what. First of all, mm, got a couple of quid. Oh, Jamie. Oh, come on, love. Just for a couple of days. I don't know whether I've got that much. Uh, let's just see what you got. Heck, it's not for long. What if I have that quid? And how about that ten bob? When can I have it back? What about the day after tomorrow? Well, I'm hard up, so I'll need it. OK, look, got to go. Oh. Thanks, love. Oh, Jamie. ta -ra. Oh, look, will I, will I see you tonight, then? Understanding. That's what I like about you, Mr. Fitch. This isn't a charitable institution. Well, I'm prepared to earn it. Look, uh, we've done a bit of business here and there before, haven't we? Not much, I admit, but enough for you to know that you can trust me. I wondered if you had something just a little more interesting. What would you consider more interesting? Let me make a run for you. A little delivery every now and then. Look, I can't afford trouble either. I mean, it stands to reason, doesn't it? There are one or two things to consider. You live with your mother. That's a possible source of trouble. I don't want to get tangled in your apron strings, Ducky. Look, my mum gets on with her life and lets me get on with mine. Besides, she thinks I spend all my time at the art college. Oh, yes. The fashion world, that's the big dream, isn't it? Another string of classy boutiques one day. That's what she thinks, anyway. What do you think? You do think, don't you, Hopkins? Even if it's only about yourself. Well, there's today, and there's tomorrow, aren't they? They're different, aren't they? Tomorrow I might want to get on with fashion, or I might not. How can I possibly know what I want tomorrow? If you see what I mean. Do you know what you want today? Yeah, well, everyone knows that. 
even your junkie friends. You don't use anything yourself, do you? You'll give me the chance then? We'll see how we get along. Hubert will explain everything. Does anyone ever come in here to buy a hat? Well, I'm uh, not going to pretend we've met before. That's refreshing. You see, I'm not used to talking to strange women, so I've got nothing prepared. P.T. Five Bob says that your skirts are... Seven inches above the knee. Cheeky. You look at me, son. Mr. Jenkins? That's right. Fitch sent me. No need to shout it around the place. And next time, don't get some matey with a staff. Huh. No offence, mate. I've been wanting to meet you for some time, Mr. Jenkins, on a matter of business. I feel you're a man to be trusted, Mr. Jenkins, with something personal in it. You see, I have a chance to turn this over. Fitch's money. But thinking about it quite calmly, it's uh, not really his until I hand it over. Isn't that right? Besides, where's the risk? I've got the customer, the money, you get me some other connection and we'll uh, both realize a few pounds with Fitch and the wiser. I'll think about it. You must understand the importance of time, Mr. Jenkins. I wouldn't dream of asking Fitch to go to bed tonight without his loot. Suppose I call you. About seven? Up to you, innit? Cheers. Sorry I'm late, Mom. I've been spotting in that crummy little library at school. They've got to do something about that place, you know. You could grow spuds on most of the shelves. Can you, um, spare me an extra couple of quid, Mom? Couple of quid? What for? Well, books. I can't do my work without books, like, can I? I think I've only got 30 bob till Friday. Yeah, that'll do. A mate of mine owes me a couple of quid. I'll have it for you by then. Stop eating those things. I've got a nice hot stew for you. I'm late for a lecture. I only came back to make sure I could order those books today. You do worry me, Jamie. I wish you'd look after yourself a bit better than you do. Well, you can't talk. Up all hours of the day and night, gadding about with all your admirers. I'll go on with you. Business wouldn't be so good for that uh, head-shrinking doctor of yours if he didn't have such a smashing receptionist. Wouldn't be at all surprised if he wasn't just a little bit sweet on you himself, you know. You just turn to watch his step. Now, I don't want any hanky-panky behind the medicine cabinet. Oh, go on with your Jamie Hopkins talking to your mother like that. Yeah. He's not waiting outside, is he? Ready to pop him the minute my back's turned. <laughs> Wish he was. Mm, things you say and me just an innocent little lad, too. Oi! <whistles> Aren't you ready yet? Well, I wasn't sure you were coming. Now, whatever put Nigel like that in your head? I can't imagine. Oh, how lovely! Get a move on. Oh, it's you. As if you hadn't been waiting in your turret window since dawn. Not disturbing you, am I? It's been a long time since anybody disturbed me, Dolly. I saw these and I said to myself, if there's one thing Mrs. Burry likes more than anything else, it's a lovely bunch of violets. Poor little devils, they look like I feel. Care to wait inside? Oh. Well, I've had bigger and better bouquets in my time. But I can't say that the floral tributes have exactly been pouring into... Oh. Deirdre Bure. Pep, punch and personality. 
That's me. It's not bad. Yeah. Well, I was doing all right till the war came. Really? Which war? Do you mind? The last one. Or so they say, though I doubt that. And I was just a child at the time. You an air raid warden then? Not me, Dolly. Didn't like the hat. No, I joined ENSA. The entertainment branch. France, Cyprus, darkest Africa, you name it, I've played it. Two years in the desert. I never lost me Ashmac. Ta 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 ta. They're either too young or too old. They're either too or too grassy green. There isn't any gravy. The gravy's in the Navy. Yeah, Navy and the Army and the Air Force. The boys made jokes about everything in those days. They had some guts, though. We could do with a few of those boys around now, I can tell you. Yeah, well, from what I hear of it, they had a ruddy marvellous time, and they'd do it again if they could. Well, they won't have to. But you might. And if they hadn't done what they did, your lot might be walking around with, with numbers tattooed on your arms instead of... Oh, well. <laughs> Not to worry. It's a great life if you weaken just a little. Here I... Uh, I bet you were a terror of the trenches, huh? Trenches? Look, you can go off people, you know. Never mind, Dolly. You come and see me again sometime, and I'll, uh, I'll show you my medal. You got a medal? What for? Well, it wasn't for good conduct, darling. There was Tobruk, you see, and I was in the canteen. And there was this big sergeant, maddened with cocoa. Well, I was defenceless. What? Yeah, well, that's another story. Off you go. And, uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. I won't. Don't worry. Trust me. What worries me kills most people. You should have seen the old bird's face when she saw those violets. I'm glad you gave them to her. She doesn't get much fun out of life. I'm hey, listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at them. Queuing up like sheep. Victims of publicity. Billy Graham. It's not what you're selling today. If you can afford the right publicity, you can be big. Anyone can. What's he going to say for yourself, then? Nothing to grumble about. He likes singing tonight. A bit of a rush, aren't you? Only got one foot inside the door. Have you learned we'll meet again yet? Get off it. Hey, look, thump, you know what, for a couple of bars, I'll join you. So fine, you got me going, yeah. Make me know your own mind. Hey, louder, damn it, louder. Shake it up, baby. Twist that sound. Shake it, shake it, baby. Come on and work it on out. You're looking good. Twist so fine. Just a little closer, yeah. Make me know that you're mine. Yeah. Yeah. Twist. Thank you. Thank you, fans. You should be on telly, Jamie. Honest, you should. He should be on the telly, shouldn't he, Mike? 
You know, before very long, you'll be that famous that we'll have to pay you just to come in here to drink our beer. Hey, it's seven. Look, I've got to make a phone call. It won't be a second. Nobody sings the old songs anymore. No more. <laughs> Mr. Jenkins, uh, Jamie Hopkins here. I said I'd call about seven. Wait here. I told you, it's business. Jamie. Hubie. Look, Hubie, keep the chaps off, will you? Look, I've got the loot right here. Oh. Run isn't over till you get back with the money. Don't be so stupid. Well, I want to help so much, and I just don't know what to do. You can't do anything. What's the use of loving someone so much if you can't help them when they need it? Comfort them, at least. If there's something you can't understand, why don't you just shut your face about it? But I want to understand. Well, suppose I don't want you to. But why, Jamie? Because I... Because I made a fool of myself, that's why. Look. It doesn't matter what you want. There's not enough to go around. And if you want it, you've got to get it yourself. And if you've got it, you don't want a lot of other people pushing in there, do you? I don't know. All I did was borrow some money. Those men lent you money? No, they didn't exactly lend it to me. They just didn't know I'd borrowed it. At least, I thought they didn't know. But that's stealing. Don't you have any savvy? I was going to take it back. What do you think I am, dishonest or something? No. Well, then. Well, you know, sometimes you make up your own rules. I delivered something for a bloke and I got paid for it. I was going to take it back. But before I did, I wanted to turn it over and make myself a bit on the side. Well, if you don't think he did anything wrong... Who said anything about doing anything wrong? I said I made a fool of myself. That's different, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, well, next time I'm going to know better. It doesn't pay to be so honest with some people. <laughs> oh, Jamie. <laughs> well, I don't know what there's to laugh about. <laughs> Not here, Jamie. Well, where then? You won't let me come in. How can I? You could if you wanted to. That's it, isn't it? You don't want to, not really. Mrs. Burry's just a very convenient excuse. You know she sleeps there, right in the front room. I don't want to do anything you don't want to do. I just want to be with you, that's all. We can just sit and talk. Be together. All right. But you have to be ever so quiet.
You were great tonight. I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't been there. Jamie. Shh. What's the matter with you? He said he just wanted to talk, remember? Oh, Carol. Carol, I need you. Don't you understand? No. No! What is it with you? Carol? I I'm sorry. What's going on up there? Well, do something. Hey, Carol! Carol, open the door! Oh, you go for her. You get rid of her. I thought I heard you. Leave it. All right, Batman, this way out. If you don't know the rules of the game, you shouldn't play. What do you women know about rules? There's only one. Don't get caught. Well, come on out! You better watch your step, or you'll be out. Always the sweet-faced little things that cause the trouble. That's all. I got this um, fantastic idea this morning. Emotional clothes. Maybe I'll call the line, um, of the moment. Publicity angles are endless. Jamie Laban, of course. What else? I'll feature happy, sad, almost glad gear. The whole emotional scene in Velvet Court. A bird's feeling low, she'll find it pays to advertise. And everybody will try and cheer her up. And that's a complete change of gear. Make them laugh, ha! Make them cry, and they're bound to come and buy. That's good, Jamie. Anything on paper? Oh, do me a favor. I only got the idea this morning while Algernon hey, played. Jamie. What about the ten bob you owe me? Look, Sid, uh, things have been a bit tight this week. Mum's been ill and I've got to pay the rent. She's been in hospital for a fortnight, you know. When you can afford it. Thanks, pal. I've got to go now. Cheers. Cheers. What's up in here? Uh, Hopkins, I'd like an explanation. I'll be you. in your office first thing in the morning. That's sir. all I've heard from you for weeks. You're two months behind with your fees when your check bounced. Look, there must be some mistake. It's I... no mistake. Your account was closed when you wrote that check. I've talked to the bank. Well, look, I can't do anything for you now, so I'll see you when... First Hopkins? thing in the morning. Hopkins! I assumed we'd be seeing you again. Well, you, uh... You wouldn't think much of me if I didn't profit by my mistakes, would you? You're wasting my time, uh, Hopkins. You're not capable of doing what I have in mind. I could be. And we can all learn something, can't we? A uh, pity. It could have been very lucrative. I want the key to the place where your mother works. Where, Mum? Oh, what for? The psychiatrist that she works for is experimenting in psychedelic drugs. Happy pills? No, mind expanders. And at the moment, they're like diamonds. You mean I've been that close to money all this time? What you see in those stupid birds? They got no sense and they're not even pretty. I understand them. What's there to understand? If I were a bird, I'd probably be a sparrow. 
Hey, do you know something? Well, what shall we do tonight? Well, uh, this girl came into the shop this morning and, and she was giving away tickets. So, so I, I took a couple. Well, I didn't think I'd be seeing you tonight. And, well, I, I thought Mrs. Barry might come with me. Trying to get in her good books, then? Well, I didn't want to go on my own. Where to? Old's Court to hear Billy Graham. Billy Graham? <laughs> if you took Billy Graham to see Mrs. Burry, you might have something. <laughs> he could learn a thing or two from her. I can't see Mrs. Burry going to hear him, though. Well, I wanted to go, Jamie, but it doesn't matter. Not tonight. Tell you what. Why don't we go together? Might be a giggle. <laughs> Super. I mean, he's not selling anything new now, is he? Well, perhaps he says things that people want to hear. It's not what you sell. It's how you sell it. Well, I'll meet you there, then. No, I'll pick you up. You won't be late. Now, what do you think I am? Pleasure, will you? You can go in now, Mrs. Simpson. How about that coat, then? Jamie, please. Get a bit fussy in our old age, aren't we? I wonder how much a smother like that would knock you back. Oh, Doctor, I wonder could I leave early this evening? Mrs. Simpson is your last appointment. Thank you very much, Doctor. Good night. Would you get me my jacket? Don't you have to lock up, then? No, the doctor can do that. Why don't you show me around? What are you up to? Well, me? You don't have to get some strange ideas, don't you? I mean, what makes you think I'm up to anything? Because I know you. Look, uh, let's find some smooth place and have some tea. I've had to show you off a bit. <laughs> Who's treating who? How about a nice kipper? Hmm. What else you got? Uh, well, I can do your sandwich. But is that enough? You know, I don't think it's right, you running around the place with that proper food in your stomach. Now, what's improper about a sandwich? Oh, you know what I mean. Well, if it'll uh, make you happy, I'll eat a kipper. <laughs> That's a good lad. You always did like a kipper, didn't you? Now, that could be an important clue about me, you know. Can you get me an appointment with your doctor? <laughs> can we afford it? Would you give Jamie a message for me? That depends. Will you tell him I've gone to get a bite to eat because I'm afraid my tummy will rumble if I don't? It doesn't do to hang around waiting for fellas. Just gives them the impression they can do what they like. Tell our meeting near the front entrance near the booking office. OK? See ya. Dr. Berman? Uh, Jamie Hopkins here. Ruby Hopkins' son. I have a, a rather urgent matter to discuss with you. Well, uh, it's a little difficult to get into on the phone. Could I see you tomorrow, say, during my mother's lunch hour? Well, no, no, I'd, uh, I'd rather she didn't know, actually. Fine. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Fine, Doctor. Cheers. some time ago. Well, where'd she go? How should I know? She doesn't tell me everything. Huh. Well, there's the first time for everything, these young girls. They're a selfish lot. Not Carol. I think she went to meet 
somebody. Sounded like a theater date. By the box office, she said. No consideration, these kids. I don't know how to treat a fella. Lack of experience, of course. Maybe she left a note. They're all the same. Maybe you don't know her as well as you think you do. I know her. Know all about her, too. Oh, uh, you don't have to rush off, do you? I was going to show you my medal. Not tonight, love. Uh, some other time, eh? Have a drink. I'm trying to give it up. Scared, eh? You're just a frightened little boy. The sort that rings doorbells and runs away. Yeah, well, uh, dingling. Not about to get caught up in that mob. I'll show her who needs a ticket. Ticket holders to your left, unreserved in the queue on your right, please. Uh, excuse me, sir. I seem to have lost my ticket. Please take your place in the line. Look, I had yeah, them before I came away. I... You just have to take your turn. Ticket holders to your left, unreserved to your right, please. We cannot guarantee you admission to a seat, but we will find you a place in the closed circuit television. I say, old chap, how awfully good to see you. I had no idea you'd be here. No idea at all. Now, let me see. Don't tell me. No prompting. I, I think you've made a mistake, young man. Murphy ah. All Saints, isn't it? No, Alison. Good chap. Oh, so sorry. That's all right. Ticket holders to your left. Unreserved in the queue on your right, please. Wow. They even got seats on the floor. Wouldn't half like a bit of a take. Oh, that luscious loot going into someone else's pockets. Hello. The action's obviously up front. Easy now. That's the trick. The best part of the success game is just looking the part. Uh-uh. Trouble. Excuse me. Uh, a pass is required for the platform. Oh, I've left it with um, Alison All Saints. He'll be along in a minute. Oh, lots of babies now together. There you are, Jamie, baby. It works. Now then, let's see. Nose in the air a bit, I think. Might as well make the rest of the trip first class. Wait till Carol spots me up here. Oh, there's got to be somebody's seat. Well, I shall just cause a fuss. Blimey, I'm surrounded. I should have turned me ruddy collar round. Get your souvenir of the crusade. There's the man himself. Showtime, folks. Sharp looking. Can see how he gets to the birds. Nice touch. How many of you here tonight are searching for a purpose and a reason for your existence? And you're searching for something permanent, something you can hold on to and sink your teeth in and believe. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? Those are questions that young people are asking in their most serious moment. That's a blazing start, old chap. Just let me pass the hat round. Now, there's a great deal to say in the scriptures about the mind. That's where many young people make a mistake. They try to come to Christ intellectually, alone. And if you try to figure it all out intellectually, Look you at cannot him. come to Christ. Taking it all in. Now, the Bible doesn't say that you're to put aside your intellect. But the Bible does say that your intellect, your mind, has been affected by sin. We are by nature sinners. Now, that doesn't mean that we're bad all over. That doesn't mean that we're all wicked. What it means is that we all have the tendency toward wrong. Here I am a sinner by nature. I can't help the fact that I'm a sinner. What can I do about it? But you're not only a sinner by nature. The Bible says you're a sinner by choice. Here it comes. Prepare to meet thy doom. The disease of sin affects your mind so that you cannot see God clearly. 
You cannot understand spiritual things. The moment you receive Christ, though, a change takes place in your mind. God says, let there be light. And immediately the veil is lifted, and for the first time you can comprehend what salvation is all about, and you can comprehend something of God. In fact, your faith can be very weak. The Bible says that all you need is the faith of a mustard seed, and the mustard seed is so small you can hardly see it. We come to God by faith, and then we begin to reason it all out in every way we possibly can, and we can buttress our faith with reason. Hey, sure doing his stuff. Better watch it. You're yeah, not one of the sheep, you know. But before you come to Christ, it doesn't make any sense at all. It sounds like rubbish. You see, you have a body, you have a soul, you have a spirit, but your spirit is dead. If cows out there, good luck. Therefore, you never find fulfillment in life. Jesus said you need to be born again. You find new life in Christ. It's like finding the key to a jigsaw puzzle. It's finding the key of the universe. It's finding the key of your life. It's finding that mysterious thing that people are searching for all over the world. Everything that the Buddhists are searching for. When Buddha died, just before he died, he said, I'm still searching for truth. And here comes Jesus Christ and says, I am the truth. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, he said. Hey, a bit strong, isn't it? Said, Many people get religious inoculation. You get a vaccination and you get a little bit of the disease and that keeps you from getting the real thing. And there are thousands of people in America and Great Britain and around the world that have religious inoculation. You've been vaccinated against religion. You've had just enough religion, just enough religion to keep you from having a real experience with Jesus Christ. Now, doesn't that sound fantastic and ridiculous to say that Jesus Christ dying on a cross 1900 years ago can affect me today? and give me a new life so that I can face the world with a new resource and a new power and a new dimension of living. Mm, sure and got it all pat. Of life to come. Yeah, but he's flogging a dead horse though, isn't he? I'm not talking about an emotional experience. I'm talking about your intellect saying, I believe that Christ died for me. I don't understand it all, but I believe it. I'm willing to receive him into my heart by faith. Now that's conversion. You have to be willing to give up those things that are wrong in your life the lying and the cheating and the sex outside of marriage. There's nothing wrong with sex. It's not a sin. But sex outside of marriage, the Bible says, is a sin. Oh, charming. God doesn't want you to have a good time, but because God wants to protect your future marriage, he wants to save you from psychological scars, to save you that terrible guilt experience. You see, the human soul is so large that the world cannot fill it. All the popularity and all the money and all the sex experience, everything, cannot fill your soul. Only God can fill it. Is he telling them what they want to hear? I'm going to ask you to do something difficult tonight. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat, hundreds of you, and come and stand in front of this platform with bowed head, reverently, quietly, and say tonight, I want Christ in my heart, and I'm willing to receive him, and I want my sins forgiven. Nobody's going to come parading down here just because he says so. You get up and come, openly and publicly. I don't know who you are, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Jewish. I don't know what the color of skin you have or what your background is educationally. It makes no difference. You may be old or young, but God, the Holy Spirit, has spoken to you tonight and he prepared you for this moment. What's the big offer? Oh, no, not her at all. Looking like she swallowed a whole blooming lot. Oh, I'll belt her one. Hey, you'll never guess where I've been tonight. I have been in Earl's Court listening to his nibs. Billy Graham, I don't believe you. Oh, can't you see me wings sprouting then? Oh, you are awful. <laughs> Tell you what, though, he's a sharp salesman, is that one? He had me half believing him. You are all sinners. All of you here tonight have committed at least one sin. Hallelujah. Most of you have committed both. Do you want to be rid of your guilt? Do you want to be rid of your sins? Don't look at me, Ducky. <laughs> He's got, he's got his Bible, he holds it up to the tips of his fingers like this. Looks like a waiter he does, isn't he? But what a menu. Seven deadly sins followed by salvation and chips with heavenly glory for afters. How about that?
All these goodies, you have to give up every comfortable little sin. Then, of course, you just die of boredom. Oops! <laughs> I want to remember this evening for the rest of my life. Don't let me forget anything about it. But... Well, where have you been? Where's your watchdog? She's out. Well, throw me the key. Come on. Not tonight, Jamie. Got a memory like an elephant, you have. One slip and a bloke's doomed for life. Look, please, pretty bird. Just talk. Promise. Do you want it in writing? Hey. Guess who I met tonight? Dennis Lancaster. Now, there's a bloke with the ear of every producer and agent in town. One mention from him, and you're in orbit. So that's where you were. Means I'm on the inside. Somebody who knows everybody else knows me. Anything wrong? Nothing. Come on. Out with it. I just don't feel like talking, that's all. Yeah, well, talking here is just a waste of time anyway. Oh, no, she's home. Oh, well, you know where she can go, don't you? Oh, Jamie! You think I didn't see you making a fool of yourself in front of all those people, don't you? I don't want to talk about it. It belongs to me. Well, that makes it mine, little bird, because you belong to me. What the...? What are you...? I'm still! If you want to pray to anyone, pray to me. At least I'll answer you. Even if it's just to knock some sense into that stupid head of yours. Look! It's all empty promises to line someone else's pockets. I won't listen to you! You don't expect to get in there this time of night, do you? Well, that just shows how stupid you are. That door is locked to keep people like us out. They're afraid we might nick something or muck up their nice polished floors. Up against those goodies they got in there, you don't think you count, do you? Do you want to try another church? Go on, pick one, anyone. They'll all be locked, you know. Well, how about that, God? No takers for a bet that one of your houses will be open. Oh, God, help me. To get an answer? I want to know. I really want to know. Because then we'd know who was telling the truth, wouldn't we? I can't explain it. It may sound like nonsense to you, but I know. What do you know? I, I know I could get an answer. Just that I haven't learned to talk to him yet. That's the stupidest, most tragic thing I've ever heard. Maybe God isn't in there anyway. Maybe he's out here with us. Not with me, he's not. Good night. Look, if anyone's going to do any running off, it'll be me, and don't you forget it. Don't bother to wait for me tomorrow. I won't be there. Well, plenty more where she came from. Well, it's a fine thing when the law says I have to give 30 days' notice before I can get rid of the likes of you. I'm sorry. Well, there's nothing to say you can't get the sack from Barry and Swallows. I think your boss will be very but interested. But you wouldn't. That's not fair. Fair? Is it fair that I've got to put up with you and your boyfriend carrying on upstairs? Well, law or no law, if you're not out of here by tomorrow night, I'll be down to Barry and Swallows. I'll give them a right old earful.
Come in. Come in. Dr. Vernon? Yes. Jamie Hopkins. Oh, Mr. Hopkins. Sit down. I, I know your time's valuable, Doctor, so I'll come straight to the point. Good. Good. Mum will be livid if she knew I was here, you know. Devoted to her work, she is. But I'm sure that comes as no surprise to you, sir. Well, I guess so far as to say it's uh, her whole life, really. Why, when friends come round and suggest a special evening on the town, <clears throat> time and again I've heard her say, no, nope, got to get my beauty sleep or things will go wrong at the office. She's not one to take her responsibilities lightly. I'm quite aware of your mother's qualifications. She's had her fair share of worry lately, what with getting me through college and all. We got a great future planned. But, well, I hear her cry some nights and, well, I just feel like jacking the whole thing in and getting any kind of work. I can appreciate that. The temptation is always with us to settle for the short term goal. I'll be honest with you, Doctor. I was wondering, do you, do you know of anybody who needs some part-time help? Could I do anything for you here? Clear up after hours? Anything? Anything at all? I'll give it some thought. I'd be grateful if you would, sir. I've managed to suss the doctor's joint. I didn't tell you to do that. There's uh, an alarm system, but I have an idea. How would it be if I got a job in the good doctor's office? Uh, I have to think about it. Well, so will I, for that matter. I'll let you know what I decide. Oh, it's you. Is Carol home? She's gone. What do you mean, she's gone? I mean, she's gone. She doesn't live here anymore. Look, she wouldn't leave without letting me know. Hard duck. Look, do you mind? Hello. Good evening. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, miss, but we'll be locking the doors in a few minutes. But it's so early, I... Even song is over. We, we lock up after even song. Have you any place to stay tonight? The Salvation Army has a hostel.
our Father, who art in heaven. Our Father, who... My Father, to bring her here for? Shh. Look, she hasn't got anywhere else to go. She's been chucked out of her digs. Please, Mum. Oh, right, then. Poor child. Of course she can stay here tonight. Is she up yet? Don't know. Young girl like that running loose around London. Whatever are her parents thinking about? They're dead. She's on her own. Mm. Can she afford to pay rent? Hmm. Got a good job. Sales girl at Barry and Swallows. Hmm. Can she get things wholesale? I could do with some new clothes. Ask her. Talking to jobs. You did quite nicely, didn't you, sneaking in to see Dr. Berman like that? Surprised you, did I? There's a possibility of a job. He discussed it with me first, of course. We agreed there's quite a few little jobs you could do. You might find it boring, though. Well, this started out as a sort of, um, 
cupboard under the stairs. Occasionally, I give it a right old clear out. I'm pretty ruthless at chucking things out. I feel sorry about it afterwards. Maybe you can create some order out of this chaos. Oh, I'll try, sir. Well, I'll uh, leave it to you. Excuse me, if you're waiting for Holy Communion, it seems we shan't have the required minimum number of three. I'm sorry, but the rules, I'm afraid. I came into... Well, I work near here. I came in to think, I suppose. I wish everyone came in here to think. It'd be half my job done, wouldn't it? I haven't been to church since Aunt Sarah. My Sunday school days. I lived with her for two years. Aunt Sarah was one of the saints. You managed to be one of the saints as well? Only for two years. Then I moved. But something brought you back. I went to Earl's Court the other evening. And somehow it all seemed very real. Now perhaps you'll find that you also need the help of the church. Listen, I've tried. I really have tried. I feel as if I've been battering on the doors of the church for days. You're the first person I've really talked to. Yes, I know, I know. Still, in all fairness... So I don't know your name. Carol. Well, in all fairness, Carol, you didn't knock on this door. We wouldn't have let you get away. We need everyone we can get. I mean, would you like to meet some of our young people? Because lots of them have been through the same experience that you're going through. Oh, I don't know. Well, now, Carol, surely an intelligent, seeking person like yourself wouldn't decide about us without giving us a first-hand examination. You are beginning to sound like an authority on God. You'll have to watch that, you know. I just can't get over how it's such a part of living. Yeah, keep it for church, will you? I can see where it fits into my life, but... Church, I don't know. Well, I know that I don't want to hear any more about it. And what's more, I want you to forget the whole thing, too. You don't own me, Jamie. You're late. So I'm late. 
Where's Carol? Is that all you've got to say? She's not gone out again, has she? How should I know? She's in and out of this house as if I didn't exist. She comes when she likes, she goes when she likes. Oh, well, she does pay four quid for that privilege. Don't be so cheeky. But you could consider me a bit. I mean, I've got a life too, you know. You both seem to forget that. Look, Mum, no one's holding you back. You can go anywhere you like, anytime. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to you if I did? Who's going to cook for you and look after you? Yeah, well, you're not about to let anybody else try now, are you, love? I don't expect everybody to go around saying thank you very much all the time, but I'm not just a housekeeper, you know. Well, what shall we do about it? Have a fight, or shall I butter you up a little bit? I'm open-minded. That's right, make a joke out of it. You think you can get round everybody with a laugh, don't you? Oh, Rick, stop your moaning. Oh, one of these days, Jamie. Just one of these days. Sit down. We've got fish cakes. I didn't feel like much. Bert called quite unexpected just before lunch. It's ever such a nice little Italian place. Not him again. If ever I saw a load of old tat. What's wrong with Bert? He's very kind, very considerate, and he's got a very good business. He's a butcher. A couple of pints at the pub, a bit of slap and tickle afterwards. The thought of him mourning you about makes me sick. Who are you to say he behaves like that? He's very respectful. You never know one of these days. I might marry him. Marry him? Oh, stone me. How could I ever hold up my head if you married that old twit? Look, how can I have a classy boutique if my mum's running about the place with a butcher? Oh, look, you can't mean it, Mum. Well, I didn't mean it was going to happen tomorrow. Besides, you deserve better, Mum. You've got class. Did Carol say when she'd be back? Some sort of a meeting. Did you pay for it? Carol, hello. I'd like you to uh, meet you. Yeah. Oh. The ticket. Did you? <laughs> Super. Oh, well, you, well, you must tell me all about it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Nice, quiet spot, less traffic. Hmm. Tom. Who's the old geezer with his hand on the globe? I think that's God. Is that how you see him? No. But I suppose someone did. Giovanni Battista Pittoni. Fair enough. Corny old picture, though, isn't it? Still, I suppose something must have got the whole thing going. Doesn't change anything for me, though, mind. But it makes all the difference, Jamie. I'm finding he's ever so near. What? Well, God, you mean? Look, only a nip would assume that... I can't prove it. I just know. How? How do you know? Because he's real to me. What an absolutely insane idea. That the... Creator of the whole world, somebody as bossy as all that's got time for you, little bird. I've got knocked here. People think I'm mad. Well, I was reading a bit the other day. It was when Jesus was talking, and he said that not even a sparrow falls to the ground dead without God knowing. I thought I'd marked it. Look, I don't know you. We've never met Carol. I shall leave. Oh, I shall go and... Look, look, listen. Here it is. Two sparrows sell for a farthing, don't they? Yet not a single sparrow falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Never be afraid, then. You are far more valuable than sparrows. Jesus said that. You're just potty about sparrows, aren't you?
Hello, love. Oh, Jamie. Look, look, I can't talk now. I've just popped in with a burning question. Are you lunching with your Bible? Miss! Young woman! It's the sort of service one expects at Barry and Swallows. Sorry. Well, what have you there? Would you know the name of the uh, managing director? Um, Mr. Rowlandson? That is correct, Mr. Rowlandson. It might interest you to know that the Rowlandsons are personal friends of mine. I have a good mind to mention to him that service in the millinery is not, definitely not, up to standard. May I be of assistance? Oh, so kind of you to ask. Oh, so thoughtful. May I assume that Madam's visit was prompted by some special occasion? Oh, yes, yes. Just a little do this weekend with the Lord Davises, their country place, you know. Cocktails and, well, just a little occasion, really. But I was hoping for something, um, precious. May I inquire as to Madam's costume? Oh, yes. I was thinking of wearing a little thing, um, all frilly, you know, and uh, in that delicious new shade, cucumber green. Oh, swinging, madam. <laughs> if you pardon me the vulgarism. <laughs> oh, certainly. <laughs> Miss Turner, what is this hat doing here? You know it requires special handling. Sir. Madam, this chapeau has a history. I regret it was ever shown. Most history? regretful. History? What sort of history? Well, I'm certain madam will be discreet. You see... Princess Grace was coming for Ascot, but was unfortunately detained. A family matter. I'm sure you read about it. Oh, yes, yes. This chapeau was created especially for... But I've revealed too, too much. <laughs> stunning. Truly stunning. Madam places me in a most difficult position. I agree. The effect is more than satisfying. Oh, but the colour, my dress, cucumber green. Oh, madam, uh, well, how many opportunities does one have in this mechanical age to purchase an original creation? Believe me, entire ensembles are built around such inspiration. Now, Princess Grace would have... I'll do it. I'll have it. <laughs> that shows outstanding judgment, if I may say so. <laughs> I trust, young woman, you've learned something. Petrified. Just a little do for this weekend at Lord Davies, <laughs> silly old bag. A cucumber green. Precious. <laughs> hey, listen, Jamie. I I'm going to hear Billy Graham again tonight. The crusade is almost over. Would you like to come? Well, I've been. Please. Little bird, I've been thinking. If Jesus Christ is so well full of this power you're supposed to have tapped, how come he lets the church pass him off as some kind of museum piece? If I was him, I'd sue. I'm sure Mr. Graham wouldn't put ideas into people's heads if he didn't believe them himself. It doesn't make them true, dear, does it? I mean, people are always saying things about religion, but, I mean, you can't just believe everything you hear, can you? I mean, it's not as simple as all that, is it, dear? And there's a sense in which true love is a fire.
really shoveling that down, aren't you? Oh, leave her alone, Jamie. Do you like a piece of cake, dear? No, thanks. I'm in a bit of a rush. Afraid God can't get on without you. Look, Jamie, if you want to argue, I'll argue, but I don't see any sense in it. Now, now, you two. Oh, can I have another cup of more? I don't like you spending so much time at that... Ah, oh, whatever you call it. How do I know what you do there? Or who you run off to meet? Well, it's some sort of a religious meeting. How many times have I asked you to come with me? Do you think I want to bore myself silly listening to a lot of soppy Christians patting themselves on the back? How do you know what we do? I know enough to know I don't like you. Well, at least the people I meet there have open minds. At least they're trying to sort out what they believe. They're not afraid of hearing a bit of truth that might threaten them. If it's church that you're arguing about... It's not church, Mrs. Hopkins. Well, if it isn't church, what else is it? That's what I want to know. Well, there's one sure way of finding out. Nah. Oh, but you couldn't do that, could you? Oh, no. You wouldn't have anything to shout about then. What's your dinner, Mrs. Hopkins? Look, I've got a great evening plan. I'm not stopping you. I do wish you'd leave her alone, Jamie. Well, I've got to protect the stupid thing, haven't I? I mean, it thinks it's been saved or some such rot. I wish you wouldn't go on like this. It's not as if you don't know the difference from right from wrong. I brought you up properly, you know. I taught you your prayers. You used to say, gentle Jesus, lovely. And you used to go to Sunday school. Yeah, well, that's different. She's a nutcase. See you. How do you hear his voice? Christ, I mean. Is it like ringing him up when you fancy a chant? Each experience is personal. Faith comes into it. You mean you've got to have faith that you can really hear it? No, Jimmy. No, look, that's is right, really. You've got to have faith he's alive. In a different sort of way, more alive than we are, actually. And that he's interested in it. Jesus Christ, an ordinary bloke who died centuries ago, and you not go on about him as if he was Harold Wilson or something. <laughs> he was just a man. He was ordinary. You really mean that? Well, I suppose he was clever. He made his name saying a few smart things like, uh, turn the other cheek, love your enemies. Well, oh, quite good things. Uh, might you say that he was one of the best men who ever lived? You might. We never met. Look, I'm sure he was a well-meaning bloke, but it's all ancient history now, isn't it? Well, I'd have thought that the last thing that he could have been was just a well-meaning bloke. See, he claimed to be the son of God. There's just no dodging that. And if he isn't the son of God, that makes him a lunatic or a fraud. Hardly qualifications for being one of the best men who ever lived. But if that's all there was to him, then the Sermon on the Mount was just a lot of double talk to dazzle the crowd. Yeah, it'd be the arch come man of history. Jamie, when you find out that God is real, and you can know him. Maybe the terrible loneliness we all feel sometimes is really just the absence of him. Oh, yeah? Well, who said that? Well, I've been thinking about it. I used to have such fits of loneliness. Not when you were with me, though. Sometimes. Give over, will you? Don't you know when it's time to close that pretty little trap of yours? Better, isn't it? Carol, I love you, little bird. I love you. Uh, Jamie! <sighs> Come on, look, you're... Jamie Hopkins, a stupid, empty fraud. All you know how to do is grab anything you want at the moment. Just well, what grab What are you screaming about? I'm not asking for much. Oh, it's not nearly enough. That's the trouble, Jamie. You're not asking nearly enough. Look, sex is natural when two people are supposed to be in love. You're the weirdy, Miss Dolly. It's, it's not me you want. Anybody will do. Oh, look, Jamie, I, I want to share everything with you. I've got so much to give, and you're just settling for a, a, a dirty little... In the Every dark. time you open your mouth, you sound like you're standing on a soapbox. <sighs> you're so busy puffing yourself up, you can't hear anything but your own heavy breathing.
Well, if you want me, God, you're going to have to get in line. You again. I'm willing to let bygones be bygones, Mr. Jenkins. This is TCC, an hallucinogenic drug. New stuff. Trip to heaven, they tell me, or wherever else you fancy going. Come from Fitch. This time, I'm doing business on my own. I only deal through Fitch. I thought you knew that. Look, I'm not taking any business away from him. That's not the point. I've known Fitch for years. It's safe with him. Now, you go through Fitch, and we'll talk money. Look, now, is that fair? I've taken all the risks. That is no way for honest men to do business. This stuff starts at 20 quid from the supplier. Yeah, well, Fitch wandering around, I might take a chance, but... Jamie? Just another ten minutes and I'll be all through, sir. Fair enough. Good night. Good night. Uh, Mr. Fitch? You know those things I said I could supply you with? Well, I'm afraid there's been a hitch. The doctor's having a new alarm system fitted. Well, I don't know why. Too many drug headlines, I suppose. Anyway, look, tomorrow this place is going to be worse than the Bank of England. Oh, look, I can't do anything myself. I mean, it'd be too obvious, wouldn't it? I tell you what, though. I could get you a key. That'd be like holding the door open for you, wouldn't it? OK. I'll give it to Hubie. Try. Police. Hello? I want to report a burglary. A drug theft, actually. It's all set for sometime tonight. 20 Sussex Place. Ooh. What a mess your conscience must be in.
everything come off. Look, if you're not going to do anything, I want that key. Well, what's so plain funny then? Becoming a nuisance, Hopkins. Phone calls at dawn. Childish, disgusting behavior. Keep it! I must have that key! That would be a bit difficult. I believe Hubert got rid of it. Got rid of it? What do you mean he got rid of it? We didn't recognize it, so it seemed the natural thing Look to do. That key for just go on the key! Just... Did you think that on the strength of a phone call from you, I'd as much as buy a newspaper? There are animals like you on every street corner. Hungry little nobodies. The supply always exceeds the demand. Move it now, kid. You'll be late for school. <laughs> Janie, where on earth? Shh. Your head. What have you done to your head? Most purse. Where is it? Oh, well, I've got to get girl. these back to Berman before What's he finds. <laughs> I don't know what got into me, Mom. But it's not too late to put things right. Why, Jamie? Just give me the key. Whatever made you do a thing like that? Well, I thought I could sell them. Look, give me the key. But I gave you money whenever I could, didn't I? I can't go on depending on you all my life now, can I? But to steal it. I did it for you. To make things easier. For me? What's going to happen to me if the doctor finds out my son's a thief? He won't find out anything if you just give me the key. Look, I can get him back. He'll be none the wiser. Don't you realise that that job's kept us? It's paid for your school and it's put the clothes on your back, it's put the food in your mouth. For me? You've never given me a thought. What's going to happen to us if I get the sack? Where's another job like that going to come from? Answer me Look, that. Just stop shouting and let me have the key, Mum. Look, I don't want to upset the doctor any more than you do. Go to Dr. Berman, Jamie, and tell you him You'll stay away from there, do you hear? Look, if you're so scared the doctor's going to find out what I've done, why don't you take the damn things back yourself? How do you take them back, Mrs. Hopkins? If I do, I'm doing it for my sake. Not to get you out of hot water. Don't you forget that. Oh, I don't know. You bring someone up, you... You look upon them as your son, you... You work for them, you give them your life, but I don't know if I love the kind of person you are. I don't suppose I've ever let myself think about it. Well, it it's not as bad as all that, Mum. Standing there, you're somebody who's not my son. Do you know, I don't think I like you. I don't think I ever have. But before I let you ruin me, I'm going to chuck you all together. See what it's like without somebody holding you up. Then you'll see what I've been to you. You'll have nothing but a bit of a girl to lean on, and she's not going to do anything for you except say what you're going to do for me.
I'll catch an early bus. Well, it's not the end of the world now, is it? I mean, there was this bloke at the pub from the BBC. Said he'd put me in touch with someone who could use my ideas. I thought you were going to be a, a singer. Now, what I shall do is question people on the telly. You know, walk about the streets with a microphone and ask people terribly clever things. But you haven't had any experience of that. Well, he said it would come natural to me. I got a way about me or something. And he should know, shouldn't he? Jamie. Well, what shall I do? Lie down and let the next bus run over me? You've got to have some hope. You can't just run and hide. Do you believe the things you say? Or do you just say them to give yourself confidence? I wouldn't say them if I didn't believe them, would I? I wonder. I've learned something about myself these past weeks. I'm, I'm not clever enough to be satisfied with... Look, you say you love me. Well, if you love someone, you believe in them all the way. There must be different kinds of love, Jamie. If it's aching for someone, I love you too much. Look, I've got a lot of catching up to do. Is that so hard to take? You're always on the run, but you're never finding it. That may be unfair to say, and I'm sorry, but that's how I honestly feel. Maybe you'll never let yourself. I love you, Jamie. I can't go on living just for the good days. It's all part of something you won't even think about. Well, who says I won't? You've said it yourself often enough. Well, look, I've managed to get on all right without him so far, haven't I? I mean, even if I wanted to. I, I don't know how. He's not bothered how. You read your thoughts. Suppose we don't get on. Just need to know 